All right, this model here, you can see that I've created has a soil, dirt, and then it has the sponges that are going to act as a filtration, which is the wetland. Then you also have your water source here, pond or lake. Now you can build this at home. It's just like a, an average loaf pan with sponges again and then some soil. So think about and investigate and make a prediction on what you think would happen if I pour water over here on this side. Um, how will that actually change the environment that I've created here? All right, stop the video and make a prediction. Now you can do this experiment at home if you want to see it, but if you actually pour the water onto the soil, you're going to start to notice the water is pouring out from underneath into, you can see the filter stopping the soil from going in, a little bit of soil has come out over here, but the sponge is basically acting as a filtration system. It's long roots of the wetlands plants are going to protect all the fertilizer and pesticides and things we put on our soil that can actually contaminate the water source. We need these water sources like ponds and lakes for fresh water drinking and agriculture and recreation. And so for us to have these wetlands in place, it actually protects us as humans, our water source. And it also protects the animals that live in that water source. Now you can see this water level here this water level actually would be equal to whatever's underneath inside the soil. So when we talk about water table, the water table is exactly the same, um, exactly the same elevation underground. So this pond and this wetland and the soil all have the same water table where the ground is completely saturated. Hi sixth graders, I totally miss you. Wish we were in class together. Uh, hopefully yesterday and uh, the day before, um, you've been able to download these vocab cards or make your own. Remember, um, if you download them, you can just cut them apart and then get the definitions on the back of them. Um, or you can make your own, but I'd like you to begin reviewing your vocabulary. We will have a test next week over chapter one. Uh, today though, we're gonna be looking at um, the next section, section five, which is the last one of the chapter on Earth's water. And today we're gonna to look at water underground. Now with water underground, this is something that some of you actually can relate to a lot. So think about if you live in West Chicago, you are actually using well water. Um, if you live in Wheaton, if you live in Glen Ellen, you're gonna be using Lake Michigan water. Um, to access for your drinking from your faucets and your, um, you know, bathtubs and hoses. Um, but today we're going to look at groundwater, which affects most of the people in the world. Uh, this groundwater is going to be renewed through the water cycle. So as rain comes down, it's going to go through the different layers of the earth into what we call the aquifer. So as today goes about, we're going to look at these seven different vocab words, and we're going to be looking at how these vocab words um, are associated with our groundwater. So let's start with this diagram. So when you look at the underground water, you can see that most water is coming from precipitation. It's soaking into the ground, and it's going in through the cracks and, and the air pockets. Um, the crevices of our soil. And as it does that, it's going to attract other molecules of water and move all the way down to what we call the water table. The water table is the level of where all the water is basically pretty even in relation to the surface water nearby. So as you look at that surface water over here, you can see that the water table is about the same elevation and then below that, you have the ground that's saturated. That means it's completely soaked. All the mo molecules um, are wet with water. And then above the water table is the unsaturated zone where the water can, um, will dry out and the ground won't be as, as, as wet. And so um, as you think about this, we can look at 
these layers of soil here. And at the very top layer, we have what we call weathered rock or soil that we can grow our plants in. And then below that, pretty low in the ground, we have what's called bedrock. Um, and so around here, you would see sandstone and granite being the type of bedrock that you would actually have um, where the water table, the groundwater, will actually um, go down to. So up here you have the water and air, both occupied pores and spaces. Um, and all of this layer where there is rock, where water can seep in, we call this a permeable layer. It means water can go through it. So think about that sponge experiment I showed you before, um, where the water is able to go into the sponge. If you guys want to kind of see how water goes through layers, you can do your own experiment um, where you actually take a jar and put sand and gravel in it and you pour water through it in, in a clear glass jar. And you can actually see how water seeps through and all the way to the very solid rock down here, which is impermeable. That means the water can't go through it. And if water can't go through it, then it's gonna sit there and kind of start making a layer of water up to the water table. And then any water um, within this area is gonna be the saturated zone. And then this is gonna be unsaturated because the water won't be sitting up here. It's only sitting down here. There's air pockets up here, no air pockets down here. All right, so in your, in your textbook, there's an experiment, um, page 40 and 41. And so we're gonna actually try the experiment now. All right, our next experiment, we're going to take um, funnels that have gravel, pebbles. You can get these probably in your backyard. I just collected these out of a little rock garden we have in the back of the house. Uh, I filled up another funnel with soil. This is potting soil. And I also filled up another funnel with sand, just play sand out of our sandbox. So as you think about these three materials, I want you to make a prediction of how fast you think water would flow through these three materials. Which one do you think the water will go through fastest? Which one do you think will take the most time? Pause the video and think about that. All right, welcome back. We are now going to look at how fast the water actually goes through the soil. We're going to start with soil, and then sand, and then gravel. About a half a cup of water in each one. All right, then I have a, I'm going to just tilt this camera down so you can see it. All right, so I'm going to put a half a cup of water. I want you to um, watch the timer on the clock. Okay, about a, this is going to be about a fourth of a cup of water. All right, starting the timer. Right now, let's watch how fast it goes down. It's going down pretty quickly. We can see it's a steady stream of water. Um, still dripping. Um, took a little while to get through all that soil. The soil is pretty saturated now. Um, but we'll let it still dripping. We're going to let it just sit here and keep dripping while we try the next one. I can still see it dripping a little bit. Oh, it stopped. The next one we're going to do is the sand. Alright, so let's watch the sand. Okay, half, a fourth of a cup again. Mm, it's not coming out yet. I'm going to keep putting it in. Oh, there it goes. Took a little longer. Oh, and the sand's even coming out. I probably should have put a filter in. I put a filter in, so this one took a lot longer. So I filter in, so this one took a lot longer. So I would say the soil and then the sand would be the longest so far that's taking. All right, last, the rocks. Okay, again, a fourth of a cup of water. Move this out of the way so you can see better. All right, three, two, one. Wow, that was very quick and all the water came out. In a few seconds, all right? 
So as you can see here, this one's the fastest because lots of space and gaps between the rocks for it to go in. The soil was second, a lot less gaps. Um, it took a little longer for it to go through, but once it got through, it started dripping pretty constantly and the soil actually stuck together. Um, and then the sand became pretty loose. It took a lot longer for it to get to the bottom, but once it did, it poured it all through. All right, welcome back. Um, I hope you liked that experiment a lot. Um, it, the sand did not work so well, um, but again, it shows you how water can go through the different layers of our um, of our ground. And so as we continue to look at this, you can be thinking about how that works. So when water soaks down into the ground, it actually is passing through the permeable layers, the layers that um, water can actually go through. Eventually it's gonna reach impermeable layers, which is way down here, which is the bedrock. And this is where we're gonna have the water um, moving down because of gravity um, towards the center of our planet. And it's gonna fill up the spaces that there are pockets. So look here again, unsaturated zone, water tables where that water is sitting. There's air pockets up here. You can see rivers and streams. Maybe there'll be a pond over here. And all of this is permeable. That means that water can go through it. The next diagram here is actually really good. It's one similar to um, your book on page 37. And we're gonna talk about what an aquifer is. So as humans, if you are getting water from the ground, you're getting it from an aquifer. There's a lot of great aquifers throughout the whole entire country. We actually have a pretty good size one in our area too that are miles and miles in, in their diameter. And the water will seep down to the aquifer from the rainwater that gets renewed that way. And the layers are stored down there of water. And so looking at this little diagram here, you can see a house drilled in a well, but the aquifer maybe was up that high and now it's lower. So because it's shrunk, they had to drill another well all the way down to the aquifer. And in our area, you can drill wells down to 30, 300 feet and you can access water um, and you can actually drill all the way like 800 feet and still get water in our area um, and there are different types of aquifers the deeper you go they say the purer the water is because it's been able to go through the layers of the earth so the groundwater here goes down to the aquifer we pull it up into our houses and use them um, every single day so if you look at this diagram you can also see an artisan well an artisan well actually has built-in pressure. Remember when we studied springs and we studied geysers before and we talked about volcanoes? So you have water being heated up below and pressure builds and water will spray out. So this is kind of like what an artisan well is. It's a well where water is rising because of the pressure within the aquifer. And it gets so intense that the water wants to come up. And so people also use that type of well to bring water to their houses. Um, and you can see again that diagram on page 37 in your textbooks. Um, the well doesn't reach below the water table. The water is not going to be able to be obtained. So that well has to be deep enough um, to obtain the water from the aquifer below it. Think about um, all this vocabulary. So I'm going to pause the video right now. This is on your note sheet or you can just write on a separate piece of paper. Um, but I'd like you to take a few minutes, you pause the video and try to answer these different um, vocabulary words and putting them in the right place. Welcome back. Here are the answers to the actual um, little assignment here with your vocabulary. Hopefully you got them all right. If not, change your answers and then hopefully you can continue to um, study those vocab words and making sure you're very confident in them. And then I also want you to be thinking about how water's moving through groundwater. Um, maybe even just pause the video again and just share with somebody near you or talk to a stuffed animal or talk to yourself. Um, but describe how water moves through groundwater layers and then explain how people obtain water from an aquifer. Think about the vocabulary and how you can apply it to those answers. And then I also want you to think about why you think God placed water underground in an aquifer. So pause the video and try to think about those answers.